All right, today is actually the last best of 2019 of the year. It's actually New Year's Eve today, and uh, we're going to see the best RODI upgrades of the year, starting oh, yeah. with... Uh, as always, the most popular. So it's probably the most popular upgrade that you guys are making to your RODI systems. Uh, and then we're going to talk about the best upgrade for water quality, mm -hmm. the best money-saving upgrade, and uh, best upgrade for flood protection. And then, of course, uh, best in show of all the upgrades out there. And then what we'd actually like to see for 2020. All right, so most popular in units sold in 2019, as voted by you guys. There's actually a lot of them. Uh, yeah. And like thousands of each one. So like we kind of grouped together to get bunched together. But the number one most popular is actually just the float valve. Yeah, I think right? this is... Uh it's most popular for a reason because it's the smartest upgrade you could add to your RODI water. Uh, like I said in some previous videos, and we've all said that you know, we've just forgotten about filling up our buckets and filling up our reservoirs, and there's water all over the floor, 12 bucks, and you can solve that problem forever. Never have that problem. I don't know any reefer, like uh, I, so many, so many reefers out there like, yeah, I bought the thing, I didn't know I needed it, and then I just filled it up. I'll, I'll come back a few hours and turn it off. Yeah, no. Nope. Set timers. So, yeah, super, night. super simple. Uh, and uh, by the way, the fixed arm one, by far the most popular. There is a little uh, adjustable one, yeah. but the adjustable one's kind of like actually the failure point because if it gets uh, loose, it can actually not work anymore. So you really, really, really need to be able to adjust it if you buy that one. So number one most popular here is this, but we're going to have a couple animal mentions here because there's like thousands of each one of these things. Oh, yeah. Yep. The next one uh, for upgrade, it's just an add-on TDS meter. I mean, this tells you that you're filtering properly that like your filters are working. Uh, the RO membrane, like if, if I don't have an oil indicator, uh, you know, change in my car or better yet, if I don't have like a fuel gauge in my car that tells me when it's time to replace it, uh, I have no idea that it's working properly or when it's going to be empty. Yeah, so uh, how, what's what we get as a filter if you have no idea if it's working. So yeah. super obvious why everybody likes TDS meters. The inline ones like this are nice because you can't get any like contaminants in the little bucket. They're, you know, cup that you're trying to get your TDS meter out of, uh, reading out of. So uh, by far the most popular or second most popular. And then right after that, pressure gauges. Yeah. Right? And so like you don't really know what you're getting one of one of these things, like what's the purpose of pressure, but every single function of the RO system is based on pressure. So like if you don't know what the pressure is, you have no idea how mm. it's really working, you're probably burning through too much DI resin, you're probably not producing enough wa uh, water fast enough. You're probably producing a lot more wastewater than you should in the ratio anyway. And uh, just knowing the pressure allows you to adjust that and know if you need to fix something. Mm -hmm. uh, whether or not you need to like replace your sediment filter because it's clogged or if you just need a booster pump or whatnot yep. uh, so uh, really 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 close uh, it, right behind that was the pressure gauge uh, the glycerin one holds up a lot longer mm -hmm. than the air one and that's probably why it's like five to one uh, more popular yeah and then the last one most popular is, is by far I can't I remember the day I discovered this thing because I had two mixing barrels it's three-way ball valve uh, I had two mixing barrels. One was for salt, one was just for RODI, but you know, I had to fill each one independently and sometimes I would not use all of my salt water. So mm -hmm. I needed it to not fill up with water automatically. So a direct connection didn't work for me. I need a valve. Uh, this handy little thing went in right in between and I just say, hey, I want water over there and I move it over there. And hey, I want water over here and I move it over there. Mm -hmm. And it just makes water in that direction. So really handy in that aspect, for sure. There's all kinds of people, things that people use these things for. Uh, people were using them to uh, put them in between the canisters on your RO system to be able to like flush the carbon blocks out. You can put it on your uh, like a wastewater line to take some water off for a little reading with your chlorine dipsticks. You know, all kinds of kinds of things. And it's super, super popular. You can achieve the same kind of thing with a whole series of other valves. Yeah. They like turn them on and off, on and off, and I would like try to, or I can say water go that way water go that way, yeah. water off, right? And so these are super, super popular and I wouldn't know it, such a simple thing, uh, but right up there with TDS meters, yeah. uh, float valves and pressure gauges is the three-way ball valve. All right, so best of 2019, going to achieve the thing that probably want most, which is increase the quality of your water. Mm. What accessory out here will most likely achieve that for the most people? Well, like we mentioned in, uh, I know, all the Investigates videos we've done on this and this topic in general, the pressure 
it really increases the performance and the best way to increase pe pressure is the booster pump kit. Mm -hmm. So it comes with the booster pump, it comes with the uh, auto shutoff sensor that, uh, rec that recognizes back pressure mechanically, electronically shuts the booster pump off. Uh, and the transformer to power the whole thing. But if I'm running, uh, you know, if I'm running like 80 PSI uh, or below, uh, it might be worthwhile to get one of these things just to increase the efficiency. Yeah, I will say if you're running 30, you need one for sure. Oh yeah. Like yeah, there's yeah, all yeah. kinds of reasons, man. You're gonna burn through resin so fast that like this thing will pay for itself probably in months. If you're running 40, maybe 50, uh, now it becomes a question. But then all there's these benefits between like 50 is running pretty good, mm -hmm. but like if I want to produce water faster, I want higher quality water, I want to do less resin. Boosting up the uh, pressure will absolutely achieve all that. We have a bunch of investigates uh, on that, and like yeah. at 90 psi, you're actually producing water like almost twice as fast, right? Right. And uh, the contaminants in there are way less as well. So if you want to increase it, especially if you're lower than 50, booster pump is definitely it. But even if you're at 50 and you want incremental results, especially faster water, and faster water, by the way, also means less waste water yeah. for those of you like in California where there's water restrictions or if you're just trying to be more green or whatnot. So booster pump, probably the most likely out there to increase the quality of your water out there. But right with that was uh, kind of an interesting thing. Yeah, it's the uh, auto flusher. So mm -hmm. they're in most of the units that you get, uh, some of them, they'll have the flush on the, on the flow restrictor. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you already have the booster pump kit, this thing can do it automatically for you and it will do it for a set amount of time. Uh, you turn your system on and it flushes and then it uh, stops flushing. So it's an auto flush, uh, auto flushes. You already have all the components get that too. Yeah, so this thing is actually pretty cheap. So, uh, and it runs off of the same thing that goes with all the booster pump. So if you're gonna get the booster pump, and unless you really like opening and closing that valve, which most people probably don't do, mm -hmm. uh, this thing's super cheap. Add it in, replace your uh, flow restrictor, and now you have an auto flushing system, keeping the membrane clean, free of all the deposits, and a great little add-on for increasing the quality of your unit, as well as longevity of the filters. All right, so best of 2019, I want to save some money. Uh, oh, yeah. What kind of accessory could I spend money to save money in the long run, or maybe even in the short term in many cases? Mm. What is it? Well, for saving money, I mean, specifically just like water, like going down my drain. Uh, and uh, right now, you know, it's like a four to one, you know, sometimes three to one ratio of wastewater. That means more water going down my drain waste than what's actually going in my barrel. And uh, over time, that can cost some money. Especially if you're in uh, those areas like California, oh, yeah. where there's water restrictions and water costs a lot of money. And you're like making a decision between like, am I going to water my lawn? Am I gonna take a bath? Or yeah. am I gonna provide water for my fish tank, right? True. Uh, and so reducing it makes it matter. And that means uh, the water save upgrade kit. So we have these kits, uh, there's a 150 upgrade kit, which is essentially another 75 gallon per day membrane that you add on to the top of your existing membrane. Uh, and plug that in series. Uh, and then you have the 200 gallon, so it's like a 100 gallon per day membrane. So a couple different options there for you, uh, but it cuts the wastewater in half. Effectively. Yeah. Yeah, and so you're producing double the uh, amount of product water with the same amount of wastewater, which effectively cuts it in half. Yeah. And so, you know, you're just producing water a lot faster. And, uh, you know, it's just a super awesome upgrade, especially if water costs a lot in your location. But what about, what's the second best way to save some money? So depending on the quality of my water, there's uh, a lot of things in the in different water supplies that just chew through resin. People see it all the time, like, hey, I only got like 100, 200, 300 some gallons out of my water production and my DI cartridge, my mixed bed DI is already depleted. Like the color change has already happened. Uh, so you can save money by separating those mixed beds out into individual cation and anion stages. So now if uh, something's chewing through anion resin and attracted the anion resin only, I'm only gonna deplete anion resin. I'm not going to waste the cation. Yeah, so going to the Pro Series resin allows you to use each one to its full capacity. Uh, they've got tons of videos on it if you wanna go check it out. But if you got CO2 in your water, you got high TDS in your water, all kinds of different contaminants and stuff, uh, you're going to save a lot of money. And in this case, like the cost of the unit, 
probably pays for itself in a matter of six plus months, right? Mm. Uh, depending on how fast you burn through the resin. But if you are one of those people who are like, man, I'm burning through resin like crazy, that's me. Yeah. Uh, this is the solution for you. Allows you to get the most out of each one, particularly the anion resin. So uh, the water, or the uh, DI saver option is the best option to save some money for you. All right, so best of 2019, protecting your house and your tank from a potential leak or uh, overflow from your RODI system, what is it? Yeah, so this one we thought was uh, a very common one that we pitched a lot, and that's the flow lock. It's I thought for sure that it was this. It's completely mechanical, and uh, we used it on the BRS-160. We used it all over the place. Um, but when we look at the numbers for what you guys are buying for flood protection, it's actually that XP Aqua Flood Guardian. So uh, optical sensor ran uh, solenoid. So it'll, uh, it, it measures the water level inside your system. Specifically, when you got this thing like tied to your tank, you could probably put it in your, in your bin and stuff too to uh, shut the water off. Uh, but when it reaches the optical level sensor, it re recognizes it and it flips the solenoid, shutting off the water. So this is what I thought this was gonna be the most popular. Is it so cheap? Yeah, right? I like mean, it's such five, a like elegant months. little solution. You know, the little pad soaks up water, flips it, and then it's closed. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can attach it, screw it down to any surface, and it'll just soak up the water and trigger it. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, normally, you know, the inexpensive option is the one that wins, right? right? Uh, like by far, right? right? Especially if it's uh, like a fourth of the price, right? So these are really great options, and they're like a good safety measure, and you can put them pretty much anywhere. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's like actually a little tray that can go underneath your RO system where this thing can mount in it. So if the RO system leaks, it goes into a tray and yep. collects it and does it there. But I gotta say, if you got the money, uh, and I guess apparently people do, uh, <laughs> this thing is cool because you can just put the sensor anywhere. Right. You know, like it's got that little optical sensor. You can just kind of snap it onto the glass of, mm -hmm. you know, your sump or, you know, really anything. And it's, you know, useful for not just, uh, like uh, the same things as like an RO system is. It's also useful for like overflowing uh, like a top off mm -hmm. or whatever yeah. and just shutting off the top off. You know, you might have your top off auto like, you know, in there or auto top off going there. It's got its own sensors and whatnot. You even might have a float valve going in here. But if I use this thing with it, then it will actually shut off the water if the water level gets too high even beyond that. Yeah, true. So like, yeah. So this was actually the most popular flood protection for working on like a quarter inch tube in an RODI system. Actually has a bunch of instructions right here in the back and um, how you'd use it. Being how inexpensive this guy is, I can see a combination of the two. Like, mm -hmm. especially if I have a long run on my RO unit uh, and maybe it goes through a wall or maybe it goes through in other rooms and things like that. Like I can strategically put these types of things at like four or five bucks. I can put these wherever I want to uh, mm -hmm. in those rooms that I'm not always in and it can detect leaks beforehand if this is uh, you know not sensing the optical level sensor or what have you so yeah it's a super super cheap option and i would use them anywhere but those are the two best uh, of 2019 for protecting your house and your tank from an ro system or any type of flood that might happen from a quarter inch tube all right, so best in show of 2019, for sure it is the booster pump here. If you have a, <laughs> a, a like pressure in the area of somewhere between 30 and 50, just go out and get one. Yeah. You'll be super, super happy with uh, the amount of water you produce, the reduction in DI consumption will pay for itself right away. If you want to faster, higher quality water past 50, you also achieve it. And I will also say that, you know, if you're running dual membranes, we oh, really yeah. like to see the pressure up around 60 65 and the, the, this thing will help achieve that and while you're at it you know the pressure gauge it tells you know it's actually working right so yeah best in show of 2019 for improving quality water you know speed that you produce it overall nothing will help your ro system produce better water than increasing the pressure and how the ro di membrane works all right, so now that we've got the best of uh, 2019 out of the way, what would you like to see for 2020? This one's, this one's really exciting for me because uh, I'm, I'm a, a geek head when it comes to, I guess you could call me a control freak. So uh, in that essence, if you know what a control freak is, uh, Apex gear. So why not an Apex-ready RODI system? That would be so cool. I mean, we're talking like 
uh, Apex readouts on my on my phone for TDS and pressure, and I can flip a switch and flush, and I can, you know, I, it already has, I already have a solenoid and leak detections and things like that, or leak detectors, mm -hmm. but all encompassing a, a RODI unit that I just plug into my Apex and I'm done, and I have all these features, how awesome would that be? Okay, so uh, as you know, you're not really taking care of corals, you're just taking care of water quality. Yeah. Right? And then corals are a result of that. So, uh, like, I was talking to Terrence, you know, uh, probably this about a year ago, but why can't we have a TDS meter that goes to my phone? Yeah. Right? Like, I don't want to crawl into wherever it is, see it in the dark. I actually just want an alarm when it hits one, you yeah. know, tell me to go change my stuff. That would be right? awesome. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, and it can absolutely be done. I know they have like wireless TDS meters out there. There's all kinds of different things we can do. But also pressure. When the pressure gets below, you know, mm -hmm. tell me and I will go change my sediment filter. I don't have to go crawl in there and find out. Right? Yeah, for sure. And then, you know, like you said, I could manually flush it with my phone or it could just auto flush it for me. Right, and I can set it to whatever auto flush uh, scenario that I want. Uh, and then of course they have all of their own leak detectors and solenoids. It does, yeah. This is just like a home run. So uh, I don't know. So somebody should produce, if not Apex, uh, they should work with us, I don't know. Uh, uh, but we should see an Apex ready RODI system out there because all of those things are capable. And I think almost everybody said, yeah, I'd like that. Uh, <laughs> and so, so that actually wraps up a whole year's worth the best of 2019. Again, it is New Year's Eve, so happy New Year, everybody. Next year, we're gonna start off with top 15, top 10 fails of all kinds of different categories. Oh, yeah. You're gonna to wanna to see where we failed for sure because they're all over the place. <laughs> uh, but for now, if you wanna go see the best of all the 2019 accessories that we've talked about today, you can see them right here.